Welcome to Zentangle Project Pack number 15. Today is day eight. My name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria. And, ah, uh, you know, sometimes I just love to just feel this paper and appreciate the opportunity to work on such beautiful canvases. That, mm. And, you know, we're just so lucky. And even the pencil is just so special here. Um, it sounds silly, but if you're grateful for the little things in life, you know, you'll be grateful for everything. So I'm giving you an idea of the of these uh, this distance uh, we're doing here for our dots and, and uh, border. Um, yeah, we often use our tools like our pens or the pencil, and you can use it as a comparative measuring mm -hmm. uh, device. But it mostly I wanted them to see how long that was, mm. you know, so, so just for not. And they, they don't have to be perfectly squared on, so don't take out any rulers. Right. No, no rulers, <laughs> no erasers. And uh, I'm going to mark um, approximately halfway here on these lines. And we're going to work with the letter A. And what do, I'm, I'm doing something that I don't ordinarily do. This is going to be a real bold statement. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm not as heavy-handed mm -hmm. as some. Uh, I sort of gave up working with chisel edge pens and stuff like that because I, I work with a pointed pen most of the time, which is more delicate. But I thought we, we'd give you an option of an, a bolder statement, something totally different than what we usually do. So this is a, a, a kind of a, a well, a we, simple we, A, but a little bit different. Right? Yeah, we were talking ahead of time, like what what to call this, what word to use, and as you see, it, as it goes on, it's almost like the word we came up with was forging. It's almost like we're forging. It's it has this like structural or metallic, you know, something that might come out of a uh, out of a blacksmith shop, perhaps. Right. It, Bold. It's really bold. bold yeah. Okay, so now we're going to put A's from the corners out. So we're, we're, we're sort of metering our A's here. There's the line from, for the top. And no matter what letter you decide to do, you, you can set it up so that you're, you start in the, in the centers and then go to the middles and then, um, and then th flip them. You can do them the other way, or depending on your letter. If your letter is like like a B, you mm -hmm. you, you could flip it, but it you know depending well, on your letter. Well, you've certainly seen so many examples of possibilities throughout this series. So here I'm putting that a, top of that A equidistant in there, you know, or semi equidistant, giving you a, a, a platform to launch from. And again, just repetitive in whatever you do. So you go to not quite the middle of that line, extend it out, and you're going to pretty much t go near the uh, the other line on the, the top, on the, of, the, the other top of the other A. Right. Well, I like the pattern that's that's occurring with the with the V shape crossbar. It looks like a what was that? The Charlie Brown uh, oh, yeah, shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but adding a, a detail like that to a letter totally changes mm -hmm. it, right? So easy. We all know how to make that shape, an A shape and then a V shape. Or um, So already it's kind of got this kind of crazy um, foreign look, mm -hmm. you know. Well, yeah. We're going to... Um, what did we decide to call this? Were we sculpting, sculpting them, sort right. of? Right, reverse sculpting. Yeah, and we're going to add some real boldness to these letters. This is going to take a little bit of time, but enjoy the, the, uh, the, uh, the time you take with yourself here. Um, I'm using the PN. I hope I, I saw that. I should have said it at the beginning. I'm sorry. But you can just gradually build it up. It's, uh, it's it, you know what it's sort of like is uh, when we did the dip candles. So I did, uh, we, we keep bees, and we had all this beeswax, and so sat down with the, uh, with 
uh, Molly's girls, and we uh, made dip candles. So every time you dip a candle into the wax, it comes out a little thicker. So maybe it's a little like that. It's more like that than sculpting, but like yeah. a, like a reverse sculpting because you're you're going back and and adding things where where you think they belong. Right. So you can see this boldness uh, coming through that's uh, t totally different mm -hmm. and, and kind of exciting to do something different, you know? And I think by making the it – get, it, it gets wider at the ends, and with that sense of rounding, it uh, gets a little bit of a character. And you can translate that into any stroke that you make because you'll notice that Maria goes back over – a stroke and just gives a little bit of love or gives it a little bit of emphasis here and there. This is just taking that idea and extending it. The, uh, the pen that I'm using, the um, PN, has a uh, m nice capability of pressing pretty hard right. with it without worrying about breaking the tip. Right. And you would think if you when you look at it that it would be just the opposite, but it it's actually structurally very uh, uh, strong. And it's it's a tip that we use or recommend particularly for people that are just starting to to work with pens like younger kids that right. may may right. not have you know have the muscle memory yet to uh, gauge the pressure. It's a, it's a really excellent uh, tool, and it has the same Pigma ink as all of the other pens in the series. So the Graphic uh, series, the, the Micron series, the PN series all use the same pigment ink. So it's not a dye. It's an actual chunks of color. So you're, you're seeing now when we're putting in these upside-down A's, that uh, we're connecting them, the, the, the ends of the A's to the tops of the other A's, and making a pattern in, in, in the way we connect the one to the other. And you, you, you can see that they're not all alike, but when you look at the whole thing as a whole, you never see that. It, mm -hmm. You just don't. You, some of them are really wonky and different shapes and sizes and directions, the way they lean and everything. But it adds to this beautiful uh, structure. Unexpected, right? Yeah. I, I totally see this coming out of a blacksmith shop, like somebody making a wrought iron, a wrought yeah. iron frame. And it looks like A's and M's. Very, very nice. And you can you can always go back and just, you know, add a little bit of uh, metal ink there in between where you want. It's totally different from what I usually do. I, right. I, I had a great time with this. Well, this series was totally different for a lot of us of what we would expect with the normal tools and that we just get into a routine of using. And I think that's one of the great things about these project packs is, is that we, we end up stretching ourselves. And I think perhaps you all end up stretching yourselves. Well, I never would have thought to do that, but right? I just want to mention so <laughs> that we're working with the Brown 01 right now. Mm -hmm. And again, Aura-ing. So there's some principles that go throughout all of these, and this idea of auraing just finishes it, holds it together. And it also Im embeds it into the design. Doesn't mm -hmm. that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, every time you start adding another layer, you start to lose uh, the fact that it's a letter and not just um, lines. And it, it sets off whatever you now will be putting next to the, those wrought iron uh, letter forms. That little gap is such a wonderful visual relief. Oh, the, brown, the brown and black is just mm -hmm. really rich. So this is sort of a, I, I hate to say it, it's a more masculine look than yeah. some of the pieces that we do. And... Um, 
I think that it's good to uh, um, go back and forth with uh, your usual routine and, and um, take chances. Well, and it's also like going to a, a restaurant with a, a palate that you don't usually eat and get exposed to different yeah. spices or different tastes. And, and you may like it or you may not, or you may like part of it and take that and incorporate it into something else. But you wouldn't know unless you tried. Exactly. And I think that's a, a lot of what's going on here is just exploring something, uh, yeah, colors as spices. So that looks kind of fun. Yeah, totally so, not noticing the A right away. Right. So uh, now we're going to go in with, ooh, orange. Yeah. And uh, add some uh, tangly things inside. And again, we're going to use this rice shape uh, to add uh, a background. And, and pretty simple. Look how simple this is. Like flexible rice. Yeah. And again, whatever, whatever you do in one place, then by repeating it, it becomes just this wonderful resonance going throughout the whole piece. So the aura is a resonant part. It's like a, you know, an echo off of that really strong black. And then these other pieces are set apart from it by the aura and then just resonate within themselves. So notice I'm doing all the upside down A's together as opposed to going uh, right mm. around and, and bouncing from one to the other so that you can hang on to um, basically the idea of what you did on the first letter. Well, you know, not exactly, but, but you, you sort of hone it as you go along uh, and it's easier to do when you're going in the same direction all the time. So then you go back after you're done with all those and then you do the right side up A's or turn it upside down and do mm -hmm. the same thing. I'm looking at the the negative space in the middle. It looks like each corner has two cats. I know. <laughs> you, you who love cats can appreciate this. I mean, not meaning you, Rick. Right. <laughs> I'm meaning all the, out, the people out there that, have, that love cats. Right. So having done that in one direction... Uh, yeah, that's a really good idea. Just appreciating what you're doing, looking at it. E even that looks good, you know. Yeah. Well, I imagine you're you're wondering, well, shall I leave it or shall I continue? Yep. So this really fills that in. And these, we're still looking for a name for this. Is it a tethered aura? Is it an anchored aura? We've looked through the dictionary so many times right. for a, a definition, and none of them quite exactly get, you know, something that's tied from two ends. Right, yet still Con resonates with the shape that it's next to. Right. So if you have any ideas, feel free to add them in the comments that below. That would be helpful. Might. Maybe we'll g send them a prize, right, right, if we use it. Add it to the Zentangle lexicon here. Well, I like the delicateness of that light color and those, you know, curved shapes in between those very um, dark, wide, structured shapes. And a lot of times we'll look at that as contrast, like light and dark. In this case, thin stroke and heavy stroke. Awesome. Right? That was fun to do. It was a very relaxing, uh, not too difficult, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm just going to do something fairly simple in the inside, but you guys can put anything you want inside. There could be another whole zentangle. This could be a frame or um, the, the limitless possibilities. Uh, I'm just going to uh, put a little bit of graphite here. And I think you're very putting a lot of yes. weight to that. Sort of holding it on its edge so you can get a, a, a dark line, a wide line. 
sometimes when you want a wide line and your pencil is sharp, you just go over on a, on a piece of scrap mm. paper and then get it to the point where you want it. A little bit dulled out, yeah. I'm just going to add a little ornament here and give you an idea of things that you can do. Uh, and then I'm going to, again, do the same thing with the, the uh, graphite around it. So the, the ornament will become the negative space. Right. So you, you can see I'm pulling the, the uh, graphite away from the, sh the heart shape. I want the heart shape to be pretty defined. So you don't want to muddy that too, too much. Right. And you'll see she has the, the point right up against it because that way you're, you can be really, you know, go right to the exact edge. So this is that similar technique that we used in an earlier, uh, earlier day, but see how smoothly you can taper that out to almost nothing at all. You're sort of inviting the um, graphite to the middle, but it, eventually it, it just disappears, like right. I said. Uh, but you keep going, going and going and going. And I, I left a lot of this in here because you'd think, okay, well, that's done. But still, uh, with a really low, low angle on that tortillon, Maria keeps working that and just really, really softening all the edges. Because when you do it a little bit on one side, then, okay, I want to balance that out on the other side. And just that affection that's, that's involved here. Right? Mm. And you can emphasize one side or the other. And you, she hasn't added any graphite f throughout this whole, uh, uh, what would you call it, smoothing. Episode, yeah. This, uh, I, uh, I also uh, clean it off often because you don't, you know, I didn't want any extra in there. I just, I wanted it to be sort of soft, softness to compare to the, uh, the boldness of the letters around the edge. And there you go. That's nice. So appreciate, sign, put your chop, and this is a wonderful work of art, and we look forward to seeing your wonderful works of I art in this whole series, because I think, I think uh, usually when we introduce a, a new idea that what other people do is like, whoa, I never would have thought of that. You know, I didn't even notice, but I didn't shade these letters at all. No. Isn't that funny? Just and, and I don't, on their yeah, own. they stand on their own. But you could, if, if mm -hmm. something, you know, uh, you tried something. And um, so when I originally did these letters, I did them white on the black. And then Molly says, yeah, there's no black and there's no white <laughs> and there's no Zendalas in there. Right. So I, I took the idea. Um, of what I had done and did it on the square, but you can see the white on black is very um, powerful. Look at that. And just that whole approach of taking a, a single form and then make and then thickening it. See the same letter, but I added some little curves at the bottom. It has like it's, a really tribal reverse this tattoo. One, this is a yeah. real tribal one, right? Yeah. So this has been a wonderful series, and we're going to have a wrap-up video, and we look forward to seeing, seeing what, what you, you do. do. I can't and, wait. Uh, yeah. So thank you for spending so much time with us. See you tomorrow or the next day. <laughs> <laughs> or the next project back. <laughs> next project back. Okay. Much love, everybody. Bye, Bye now.